Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, another special expansion review. And today I'm very excited to check out Scythe Invaders from Afar from Stonemaier Games. This is going to add two new player factions, which means now you can go up to seven players. It's for ages 14 plus, and it will add time to the game if you are playing with six or seven players. Obviously, I think they said 25 minutes per player to the game. But in Scythe Invaders from Afar, you are going to have two new factions. You're going to have Connor and Max, Clan and Albion, and you're going to have Akiro and Jiro Togawa Shonatata. And you're also going to have some other stuff that will fix some balancing issues when you decide to play six and seven players. What am I talking about? What are these cool special abilities? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Scythe Invaders from Afar. So first and foremost, we're going to handy dandy rule booklet. It's probably about seven, eight pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations. And it's very well done. It tells you exactly what comes in here and how all the special abilities work. So big thumbs up. You'll probably need this once or twice. Never need it ever again. You're also going to get Autonoma rules for Scythe and some upgraded cards for the Autonoma version of the game. Unfortunately, I have not played Scythe Autonoma. One of these days I will get to it, but I just never have gotten to it, so can't really comment on those. So, in Scythe Invaders from Afar, you're going to get a couple things, but the big stars of the show are without a doubt going to be the two new factions, but let's save those for last. So first and foremost, you're going to get two new boards that you'll be able to use. They are 2A and 3A for seating. This one is innovative, which means they're going to get a whole bunch of money when they do upgrades. And this one is militant, which means they're going to get a whole bunch of money when they do mechs. And they're asymmetrical, just like every other board that you're going to play with in sight. You're also going to get some various different tokens. So these are going to be 50 coin tokens, in case you ever get to 50 coins before the end of the game, which I never, ever do, because I'm terrible at the game, even though I love, love, love the game. Uh, next, you are going to get these two tokens right here. So there were some special ability and some mech abilities that were not that good when you played with six and seven players. They're completely useless, honestly. And uh, so they, they took care of that and they said, all right, if you're going to be going up to six or seven players, just pop these onto your board and bada boom balance once again is restored to the world of Scythe. So it's really nice that they did that. I know a lot of game companies might not have worried about something like this and just pooped out two new characters, but they put these in here. Big fan of that. So the main star of the show, though, is obviously going to be the two new races that you're going to have. So we'll start with my least favorite and go to my most favorite. So my least favorite here is Akiro and Jiro. And I say least favorite, and I say that in still a loving way. I really think there are some cool stuff on her. So her big thing is that she can lay traps, traps all over the place. Uh, well, four traps all over the place. Uh, after she moves, she will have the ability to put one of these traps down on a spot. And these traps, these traps are like legit bad stuff. So when someone lands on the trap, this person's going to lose two action cards. This person's going to lose three power. This one's going to, the person's going to lose two hearts. And this person is going to lose four coins, which as we all remember is victory points. But especially early in the game, losing four coins really is a herder. Uh, so you're going to be able to put down those traps. And once somebody goes to them, boom, you're going to flip them over. Now, if the traps are un, uh, unmeshed with at the end of the game, you're also going to get points for having those traps out there. Now, let's take a look at her four mech abilities. So first, move across the river, max one character or one mech per turn. So she's going to be able to move across the river, uh, even though I will mention, and this is a big thing that I want to mention before I forget, both of these characters are not landlocked. Where, like, where all the rest of them start on their own little island, these ones can actually go diagonally, and they will be, boom, right, they can get to the factory a little bit faster in theory, even though it didn't work out that way in the times we played with it. Oh, but back to it. Move across the uh, the river, but you can only do one character per turn. Uh, if you have to be fighting on lakes, move two from lakes. In combat on a lake, you may play one extra action card, fighting card, which is cool. Before combat, where you have exactly one unit, gain two on the spider track, the warfare track. And then the big one, which is actually worded a little bit weirdly on this one, move to any territory with a trap token, you may arm the traps. That kind of implies that when you go to a spot that already has a trap token that's been uh, utilized, that you can... Uh, that you can rearm the traps. You can flip it back over from this side to that side. But in actuality, when you read the rules, luckily we read the rules first, it means you get to teleport. You can just teleport to that spot. Kind of think of it like a mine, where you could go from all the way across the board, move one space, and move two 
your um, your trap, which is a really, really unique special ability. And as I mentioned, even though I like these guys better, this is still probably in my top three or four factions. It is really, really stinking cool. So, uh, also, her special ability, after moving your character, oh, place a trap, duh. Uh, so let's take a look at those minis as well. Uh, so she's got a little monkey, she's got a big staff. Not a particularly big fan of her mini, but, whoa, her mech is super duper cool. Yeah, cool looking mech. Her, her meeples also have cool little hats too. Cool little Asian style hats, which I think is neat. Now, moving on to Connor and Max Clan Albion. They have the special ability where they can put something else on the map. They're not traps, they're actually flags. And these flags are going to give you uh, plus one to control that territory at the end of the game. So normally you'd count up your territories at the end and say, I control one, two, three, four territories. If you have a flag on one of these territories, you'll now have five territories. The only rule is you can't place them right next to your spawn point because, yeah, that be, would be lame. So you're going to have these flags, and these flags also, well, I'll get there in a second. Here's your little meeples. They got square hats. They're not nearly as cool as the purple meeples. But let's take a look at your mech's special abilities. You may move across rivers to or from an adjacent tunnel factory. And these are why I love this one this, the most right here. Before combat, where you are attacking, uh, before combat, when you are where you are attacking. So if you attack someone else, they're going to lose two of their power, which is gigantic. And before combat, where you are defending, you're going to gain two combat. So you are just all about combat. When I first played this, boom, took that off, boom, took that off, and I was just a killing machine. Well, until I got my two stars and then I kind of laid off. Um, last but not least, move to any territory where you have a worker or flag token which means that you'll be able to teleport as well. So very, very useful, uh, especially being able to move to where a, a worker or a flag token. So you're going to be flying all around the board. Uh, so yeah, that is Connor and Max. So let's take a look. They got the cool dude with the gun and then the big, uh, the big warthog type thing. And then they have the mech right there, which is a nice little mech as well. But that is what you're going to get instead of Sipe Invaders from Afar. Alrighty then, Scythe, Invaders from Afar from Stonemaier Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, if you didn't like the original Scythe, this is not going to change your mind. While it does add some really cool new special abilities with those two different factions, it still, gameplay-wise, is the exact same game, which, if you didn't like Scythe, because of the gameplay, you're not going to like Scythe with the expansion. Another con is that if you do go six or seven players, that's going to add a considerable amount of time to the game. They say 25 minutes per player, but honestly, I think it's slightly more than that just because, you know, especially if you're playing with new players or something like that, just be warned that if you're playing a six or seven player the version of the game, it's going to take longer. And also, it's going to be a much busier board, so you're really going to have to be... Uh, more cognizant of where your opponents are, especially if you're near any mines and paying attention to like the black, uh, the black faction, which could potentially be moving three spots a turn if they've gone to the factory. Other various different aspects like that, where before you only had to kind of worry about them. Now it's like, oh man, I really got to be paying attention to what is around me on the board. But honestly, I like that, so that didn't bug me too all too much. Now, one thing that is going to bug some people, once again, didn't bug me that much, is the fact that these two new factions do not come with their own combat spinners. Uh, the original base game came with five combat spinners, so everybody would have their own unique combat spinner. They chose not to do that for this one, so these two new factions do not have their own unique combat spinners. Now, this didn't bug me because you get into combat so little in the game. Like, tops, you probably get into combat maybe three, four, five, six times in the game, you know, maybe six tops. So you're not going to be using it too terribly often, so you can just pass it to somebody else so they can use it, but I do understand why some people would be annoyed by the fact that these two did not come with faction spinners. Uh, another comment I have with this game is that the game was perfectly fit into the box for the most part. I have the Iron Connoisseur Collector's Edition, which has the big book as well, and it's going to be very, very difficult to fit all of this into the box, and if you do fit it all into the box without some third-party, you know, thing that you're going to have to construct, you're probably going to have to Tetris it in there in just the perfect way and always put it back that perfect way. So that is a little bit annoying. I personally don't mind it that much because I can just throw a bunch of stuff into a big bag. I don't care about it. We have to sort it out when we play. But it is something that will inevitably bug some people, especially just because Scythe, the original version of Scythe, took so much careful consideration into telling you exactly how to fit everything into the box. It seemed odd that this one was just like, yeah, here you go, throw it all in the box. Anything else on the con side? 
No. Moving on to the pros, this is a fantastic expansion. If you like Scythe, if you enjoy Scythe, this is a must-own expansion, I would say. If you want more variability, this is going to give the game more legs, so it's going to want to play it more often. I mean, it's just that simple. That's the whole point of an expansion, is to get the, the game back to the table, and this will get Scythe back to the table, because you inevitably are going to want to try both factions, you yourself, because both factions are very, very cool, and I think both factions are probably in my top four out of the seven factions. Uh, so I really, really like uh, Clan Albion. I just love the fact that regardless of once you get those mechs up, you can both attack and when you're defending, you're going to be either knocking down someone else's uh, warfare or bumping up your warfare, which is really cool. And if you can get it set up so that you can attack twice on a turn, potentially even the same person, which I was able to pull off once, that is absolutely mammoth if you can just say, all right, Here's the first attack, you're going to lose two of your power. Here's the second attack, you're going to lose two of your power. Now, obviously, you take care of one fight first and then the other fight, but still, they're down for power, which is going to make them greatly change what they would be doing on their turn. So I like that an awful lot. Now, moving on with Clan Albion, I love the teleportation special ability, and that is just mind-blowing. The fact that you can move to any territory where you have a worker or flag token. That means you will be able to zip all around the board, and you actually kind of might want to leave a stray worker here or there in the hopes that no one's just going to go there uh, and just knock them back because if they knock them back obviously they're going to lose a heart which they don't want to do so maybe if you're you're flying around the board with your mech or you're walking around the board with your mech you might just drop a stray worker here or there because people don't want to lose those hearts and you'll be able to teleport back to that the teleportation in this game is a super cool aspect, especially with Clan Albion. Now, moving on to Tagawa Shogunate, uh, they also can teleport as well. It's not as cool because it's just to their traps, but it's actually more functional because you're going to want to get down those four traps. You're going to want to go to that middle of that board, you're going to want to lay down all those traps, then you're going to want to teleport back to them and reactivate them because these traps, oh, these traps are big business. These things, you do not want to land on them. Minus two, uh, minus two battle cards for some people is huge like that cripples their entire attack plan like they might have a five and a four in their hand they're like all right i'm gonna be able to attack i'm gonna be good uh, and then if they land on this it's like i'm in the middle of nowhere i have no attack cards yes i might have some good attack power but now i am just screwed out here so that's going to change what they're gonna have to do they might go for attack cards when they were otherwise not planning to take attack cards and i know euro games most times most people love Euro games because there's not normally too much attacking in Euro games. It's just, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to build up my engine. I'm going to optimize this. I'm going to, it's going to chug and chug and chug, and my engine's going to be better than yours. These are very attacky. Like, they will mess you up to a certain extent. I mean, losing four coins. If you are a faction who, at the beginning of the game, does not have many coins, and you lose four coins, it's like, well, now I have to take an entire turn just to get coins or do something like that. That can be huge. That can be huge. Losing three attack before a combat once again really huge and uh, I, I saw somebody do this it's really cool you can just kind of set up traps all around the factory and then just guard the factory especially if you can get a mech up there it's it's really neat i like their special ability an awful lot uh, i just think i like clan albion a little bit better with that teleportation but still very cool also before combat where you have exactly one unit you can gain two to attack so you kind of just want to make sure that uh, you're not attacking with two if you want to gain that but overall, uh, Scythe, Invaders from Afar, excellent expansion. If you like Scythe, if you love Scythe, this is a no-brainer. Go get this. It's going to give you two new factions that you'll be able to play with. Two new factions feel pretty well balanced as well. I know some people were a little bit concerned about how the fact that they start and they're not landlocked, so they can just, boom, zoom straight to the factory, which you would think would give them a sp specific advantage. But we did not see that really come into play too terribly often uh, or at all that just didn't happen so uh um, scythe invaders from afar really really enjoy this one if you like scythe go pick it up if you enjoyed this review please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know scythe yay or nay but more importantly do you think it deserves to be the number seven game on board game geek of all time now uh so first personally for me yay 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 yeah. i remember trying this at gen con back when it was a prototype and i was like oh my gosh this is blowing my mind this is awesome there's just so incredibly much strategy in this game, but at the same time, it's just you're taking one action a turn, so it's very simplistic in that aspect, and I absolutely love it. So yes, I'm a huge fan of Scythe. I think in oh, all the Game of the Year awards and all the awards that it won, I think it deserves those awards. I think it's a fantastic game. Now, top 10 games of all time. For me personally, it's not in my top 10 games. It's my top 100, but man, top 10 games of all time is a hard one, and I think it's probably partially because of all the hype. 
Uh, but that being said, yeah, I think it deserves a spot in like the top 20, top 50 games. So I'm not too too upset at the fact that it's number seven on Board Game Geek right now. But let me know in the comments below. Do you like Scythe? Do you think it deserves to be that highly rated? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.